very honored and privileged to get to work with Virginia, Virginia, and she helped to make that picture a real success. And uh, she was a wonderful person and uh, wonderful memories of making Fort Dobbs with Virginia Mayo and Brian Keith, and she certainly deserves that award. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Clint. You can stay right up here because these folks love to see you and we appreciate you so much. Thanks, Clint. Sheriff at the, at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. There he met many celebrities who encouraged him to try his luck in Hollywood, which we here are all glad that you did. As luck would have it, Clint was quickly introduced to Cecil B. DeMille, B. DeMille who took a liking to him and offered him a part in his latest film, The Ten Commandments. Shortly thereafter, Clint was cast in the role of Cheyenne Bodie in the hit series Cheyenne, which ran for eight years and was such a treasure that it can still be seen no. on no. the airwaves today. No, no. Cheyenne became television's first hour-long western and established Clint as one of the new medium's biggest stars. He went on to star in movies such as None But the Brave, The Great Bank Robbery, The Dirty Dozen, Send Me No Flowers, which I loved, Night of the Grizzly, Fort Dobbs, Yellowstone Kelly, and The Gold of the Seven Saints. He has a beautiful singing voice and recorded an album of songs and ballads for Warner Brothers. Sorry. After Cheyenne, Clint made another television series, Kodiak, and a number of features and movies for television, including The Bounty Man, Yuma, and South Snow Beast. He co-starred with Telly Savalas in the acclaimed western Pancho Villa and appeared in television, guest appearances, and his beautiful voice, along with fellow actors from the Dirty Dozen, can be heard in The Toy, Storge, uh, the Toy Soldiers. A talented, multifaceted actor, a true gentleman, and someone who personifies the code of the West by living it each and every day. Ladies and gentlemen, the big guy himself, the one and only Mr. Clint Walker. Thank you so much. I should have had her for an agent. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, uh, I've been blessed, uh, really blessed to work on Ten Commandments. Uh, before that, I had a one-day stint with uh, Leo Corsi and Hans Hall in a little picture called The Bowery Boys Go to Africa. And uh, they were on their way back. They are going to get on the riverboat, and they were going to take Jane back with them. Well, I come out of the, uh, the jungle and I beat on my chest and give the child Tarzan yell and I say, you know, take Jane. And Hans Hall and the big, of course, here, nose to nose, and they shake their heads, they say, we know, take Jane. But well, that was my debut. And the next thing I know, uh, I'm, I'm doing Ten Commandments. I'm the, uh, the guard standing by the throne with Sir Cedric Hardwick and Yul Brenner and, and Jordan Heston and, and uh, Miss Baxter and Woody Stowe and a whole bunch of people like that that I'd seen before in movies. And uh, here I am, really, I'm a nobody. Uh, but I'm there with all the biggies. And I, it, it, during the making of the film, I saw him make a few mistakes. And I thought, boy, maybe this will for me. <laughs> 
But at any rate, uh, God really blessed me. And somebody was sure opening doors for me because uh, I, I got put under contract by Hal Wallace. And then evidently Warner saw the, the uh, screen test I made for DeMille. And they bought my contract. Next thing, uh, uh, in about two weeks, they were uh, uh, doing screen tests about every leading man that was available in Hollywood. And they had me do it the first day. Then the second day, they had another bunch. And the first day, I was so nervous, and I thought, this is silly. You know, here's all these leading men I've been seeing for years. And I'm a, a, a no experienced guy. I'm not about to get the part of Cheyenne. The second day, I was convinced I wouldn't, so I relaxed with it. And uh, then about a week later, uh, Jack Warner went to the screen test, and he finally pointed to me and he said, that's Cheyenne. But uh, I... I think it had something to do with the fact uh, that I was already on the payroll at $150 a week. <laughs> These other guys would have charged two more. But anyhow, uh, I was very lucky and I'm very grateful that I got to do the Cheyennes because here I was with one of the biggest studios in Hollywood and they had to work with all that. They had the, the know-how, the equipment, the stages. Uh, they had a library where they could pull out film on a cattle drive with a thousand cattle, which they certainly couldn't afford to do for a Cheyenne, but they had some good cutters there, and boy, they made it look real. So, uh, and it was an hour-long program, the first one, I guess, uh, of TV, hour-long westerns, and uh, anyhow, it became a success. And I never realized, I guess, till lately, when an awful lot of folks, I guess, got tired of the stuff they'd been showing on TV and they decided they'd better go back to the old days and see the gun smokes and the Laramies and, uh, and the Cheyennes and whatever. And uh, I just, I really lucked out. And uh, we've been, uh, we started a website and that's went very well. And of course, I got to do shows like the one here. And incidentally, I want to thank all you folks for coming uh, to this year's Western Legends Roundup. And uh, I'd like to accept this award, uh, not just on my behalf, but uh, all the guys that are doing the show this year, uh, because they're. And, and I hope they all end up getting an award as well because they certainly deserve it, the James Stacy's and uh, uh, all the rest of the bunch, the Ed Faulkner's, a wonderful bunch of people, wonderful uh, bunch of guys. So I really don't have much more to say than thanking you for coming here, thanking you for uh, coming to this uh, latest version of Western legends around them and uh, I hope that we have more in the future and that each one's bigger and better than the last one and you folks are the ones that help make it a success so I thank you and I thank Julie and, uh, and I just am grateful to be a, a, a part of this thing along with the other guys and gals that are here that are celebrities in their own life and you, I guess that's about all I got to say, but thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Clinton.